Hi everyone in Cloud Computing and welcome to episode 30 of the Cloud Computing Training Show with Brad Nelson and internationally recognized and world's number one cloud industry expert and thought leader, David Linthicum. This show is sponsored by Nelson Hilliard, cloud computing recruitment specialist, placing great people in cloud, IoT, FinTech and AI. This week we are excited to have as our special guest, Yuri Misnik. Yuri is the Executive General Manager and CIO of National Australia Bank and was previously the global digital CIO of HSBC and Board Director of Amazon UK and Ireland. Hi Yuri, a warm welcome to you. Right, thanks very much for having me here. It's a pleasure to be here. Fantastic, it's great to have you on board. And Dave, a warm welcome to you too, sir. It's wonderful to have you on the training show this week. Yeah, it's great to talk to him about training again, one of my favorite topics. Yes, we do love training. On a weekly basis, we love our training shows. Well, in this week's training show, we'll be talking about that cloud is an accepted component of IT and one that is allowing organizations to speed up the way they deliver new products and features to market and security cannot afford to be seen as a blocker to change. Security governance should not be at odds with agility and innovation as it should enable agility and innovation. So a quick question and a nice opening question for you, Yuri, is how much of the success here will be due to training? Oh, it was absolutely a huge pillar for us. So as, uh, as, as we've been publicly talking in the press and uh, we've been talking about this uh, in the Amazon summit uh, recently in Australia, uh, we are um, investing a lot of money and time and effort into upskilling our workforce. Uh, we recently launched uh, a Cloud Guild, um, a, um, which is essentially our training program for um, NAB employees, uh, technology and non-technology, to upskill them in the cloud. We're working a lot with Amazon and we're starting to work with other vendors to bring it. So I think training is absolutely critical for the success. Yeah, it really is. And I think you're doing a very admirable job as a brand for, for looking after that sector and, and making sure that you've got the right people in-house to, to cover those positions, as well as obviously demonstrating to the market the, you know, diversifying the training into so many aspects of cloud. So, you know, one, one hat goes off to you for doing that. I think that's very uh, admirable. And there's a lot to learn from that from other brands as well. So uh, over to you, David. Yeah, Yuri, one of the key questions that I have, and you as kind of a practitioner who lives this every day, um, you know, how do you make the trade-off between uh, security and the amount of training and organizational tra change that has to happen to adjust to the compliance needs and changing security best practices and the ability to kind of move fast? It seems like we're going to do a lot of digital enablement. Security really kind of has to go along for the ride. Uh, however, if you place too many obstacles into leveraging various systems, specifically by the customers and users, uh, you know, that's not necessarily going to be a good thing. So how do you make the trade-offs? Uh, that's a great question. Uh, thanks, Dave. Um, security controls and compliance are absolutely top priority for us. So we are in the of public trust. Customers trust us with their money, so we can't afford uh, to be, you know, um, to, to not be thinking about it and for it not to be on the top of our minds. I think one best thing, so you talk about this trade-off between, you know, fast-moving fast movement and security on the other side. We actually think we can do both. Uh, and uh, we've been talking a lot to our regulators about that as well. We've been literally in a constant conversation with APRA over the last three years on how do we uh, use cloud and do it securely and do it at pace at the same time, which seems to be sort of a little bit uh, of impossible. Now it's things are changing. So one big thing which we uh, we believe is, is key here is that um, security in the cloud becomes code. Right. So we think of security as a code. We automate controls. Uh, we automate um, security checks, code scanning tools. And effectively, what we do is that instead of actually providing, uh, in a traditional sense, uh, a, a set of documents to our development teams and a set of processes which they can follow, we actually give them a, a service catalog and, a, and an item in the service catalog which can click and they get themselves an environment and this environment has all the controls uh, audit controls, compliance controls, and security controls built in, so they don't have to reinvent the wheel time after time. So we, uh, then obviously they need to be aware of what they're doing and how they're doing, but we give them uh, a lot of pre-built uh, framework and scaffolding and things which not only is good for them, but also things which they kind of change, uh, which is great for our audits and great for our uh, security and compliance uh, posture. So as you know, we're building you know, additional layers of security into these various systems, there seems to be we're integrating 
security systems with governance, cost and you know cost monitoring, you know things like that. Uh, is are those difficult links to make? Do you think in the industry, not necessarily at NAB? Uh, it is. I actually think there's a lot of there's lots of tooling and uh, lots of technology which helps you do that and which sort of emerged in the last uh, two three years. Um, the biggest problem with with security was, in my mind, was not just so that the, was not just process and how you do security. It was more how do you make sure you do it consistently in every way because uh, it's always always about the weak link and how do you avoid the weak links. And with the, uh, with the new ways of doing patching, with the new ways of doing, so for example, in some, some of our new environments, we don't patch. We just destroy the environment and roll out a new uh, instances with a new updated level of patching straight away. So we don't have unpatched servers. It's not every way, it's just starting for our cloud native apps, but we're slowly moving to the place where it'll become norm. Uh, for uh, for sort of code scanning tools, we'll have them built in, and there's lots of uh, really cool modern tech vendors which emerged in the last couple of years, which we can apply to uh, do threat scanning of the on the deployment pipelines. Uh, there's a lot of analytics around networking and things like duct trace, which uh, allow you to do lots of very smart things on uh, on your environment and detect of anomalies um, which are happening inside that. So. I think it's 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 not getting it's it's still a it's still a tough job and it's still complex, but you have lots of tools which can help you. I think the trick here is not to be afraid of looking uh, broader and outside of your traditional ecosystem. And I know there's some enterprises which are very much sitting in their sort of IBM slash Oracle mindset. Uh, if you start thinking broadly, you can find a lot of help and there's a lot of innovation happening in the world around that. So it's just your appetite of using it. So. Moving into a DevOps world, it seems like we're asking developers to understand more and more about security, you know, going forward, because we have to build it into the code, uh, not necessarily layered upon the outsides of the application. How much training or retraining needs to occur, do you think, within development organizations so they understand how to build security, security as code, infrastructure as code, uh, configuration, all these things that they're asked to do, which may not be their formal initial training? Uh, we're trying to be a little bit more uh, selective there. So when we talked about, when I talked about building the uh, standard patterns and standard uh, landscapes, what we call them, so the uh, pre-configured environments which have all the controls built in, we actually have a, a special team who, who is focusing on doing that and doing that very well. And they have SecOps people, they have DevOps people, they have standard engineers, and they have infrastructure guys. So, and we train them very well and we train them a lot and we do a lot of, uh, like you know, uh, additional code reviews and manual checking. So effectively, we're trying to take the complexity a little bit away from uh, like um, your normal developer whose job is actually to write sort of uh, business logic code or UI uh, code, which uh, effectively gives value to customers. We still want them to be aware, so we still um, are making sure that they know the basics and understand what's running on the pipeline and what's code scanning we're applying, what's the what's the proper security coding best practices, but we don't want, we don't want them to be like a core, you know, SecOps people, and they, we don't want them to necessarily touch or modify the core controls uh, which are pre-built in these environments. So it's more like we want to make sure everyone thinks about security, but not everyone needs to be a uh, level 400 experts uh, in, uh, you know, how to build, I don't know, uh, audit controls and security groups uh, in your, you know, cloud formation scripts. Great, great insights. Back to you, Brad. Thank you, Yuri. Thank you, Dave. Thanks, Yuri. Yeah, again, very insightful. Uh, it's great to hear uh, what's going on with regards to, yeah, as Dave said, you know, the DevOps are all very well and good, but if they're not coding for security, then, you know, it's just creating a whole lot more work. So it's great to see that you've, you've got that angle covered. So what's, what's been the impact, Yuri, would you say on the business from having this in-house training from, from when that, that point started? We've definitely had a lot of excitement. We, um, first of all, we were surprised that when we just announced the Cloud Guild and the whole cloud training program, it's not just tech people who signed up for it. We had lots of interest from the business and uh, and people who are sort of sitting in the branches and doing some operations stuff. They wanted to, to learn more. I think it's great for brand. It's great for us, you know, giving people an ability to explore something different. Uh, we also had a massive uptake from our engineering skills. I think we got our... 
in three months, we got 100 certified AWS engineers, uh, internal engineers who got certifications and we're probably going to hit more, uh, more, which is great. I mean, we, we, it helps us a lot. But I think the most uh, important thing for the business was that we, we start attracting a little bit different level of talent because of the, uh, the market sees a level of investment which we, which we are taking into this. Uh, the market is seeing that tech and business market is seeing us more as on a front foot forward rather than uh, you know responding to you know tech nab not always nab was seen as a as a cool place to work from the tech side uh, and i think we're changing that so the it's not there yet we're just first steps so it will take us it's a journey uh, but the business is seeing that and and they're recognizing that yeah, they absolutely are. I've heard many of people that, that feel a, a certain way about NAB in, a, in an exciting way, definitely with the, the embracing of training and, and the innovation that's coming from NAB, absolutely. The, it's out there in the marketplace, that's for sure. If that's any consolation for you, I, I'm sure you know oh, a bit more. Oh, that's great. <laughs> Just give you a little bit of a feedback directly there. Um, but with regards to your training, what, can you uh, give us an idea of what the, the, the three most popular aspects of training have been from the take-up, from you know, staff within NAB and, and external? Uh, we're start, we're just starting, so I don't have like a like a real statistics for you. Uh, we've had a lot of interest in the uh, AWS Essential course and sort of getting getting people to the basics. Uh, we've had a couple of very very uh, highly attended sessions on on Docker and ML, uh, sort of in machine learning, uh, and we do it sort of every week. So so what we see now is that as people went through, coming through this first wave of uh, basics. They start seeing and start being interested in other bits and pieces. And for example, the machine learning um, uh, session which we did was attended by not only tech people but by the business a lot. They're trying to understand what it means and what the trend is. Uh, and we actually start seeing externals coming in. So we've had we actually do a lot of things around user groups. We're hosting some external events in NAP. So we have a great auditorium here at uh, 700 Brook Street, and we're very open to. Uh, you know, hosting more technical events, which will benefit us and, and the broader community. Uh, I think one of the most popular sessions recently was the Cloud Bake Off, when we had uh, a lot of vendors uh, coming in, and essentially we had a, a battle between public cloud and private cloud in a, in a civilized way, which is cool. We had people from IBM, Amazon, uh, Dell, Microsoft, Google, and uh, those different teams playing the arguments was, was, was cool actually people like it because we're trying to add a little bit of fun and uh, a little bit of social into all this stuff yeah that's that's great and so if you could give some advice to someone that's looking to get into cloud and whether that's through you know working for nab or you know alternatively with another brand what would be your your overall advice as the cio of, of nab uh, if I'm talking to engineers, I actually say don't wait for somebody to give you training. There's online, there's so much material online. AWS Essential courses are online. The whole reInvent uh, and Microsoft, uh, I think, I don't remember what the, what the name of the conference they run, but all the materials are actually public and available on YouTube. You can learn and watch a lot. Coursera and Udemy are there, so just don't wait. Don't wait, do it. It's, it's the future, uh, at least for a well, let's say medium term, right? God knows what's going to happen in 10 years' time, but uh, we definitely don't see this trend disappearing in the next sort of five to 10 years. Uh, don't wait. Um, that's that's the biggest um, the biggest expectation. And for uh, for my colleagues in in the same roles, I would say uh, the thing which which changed a lot in NAB is that we started being very vocal about cloud. Uh, we've danced on the surface, we've danced on the edge, and we, we've talked a little bit like, you know, we still have IBM, but, but we, uh, and we still have our data centers, but we sort of want to experiment with cloud. About six months ago, we started being extremely direct and saying, we believe cloud is the future for us, uh, and we're going there, and this is our primary strategy uh, in a proper regulatory approved uh, compliant way, and, um, and that changed the tone of the organization. So. Uh, I think if organization wants to get there, it needs to change its own. Yeah, very true. And just fi just a final quick question that you've just spurred from that last comment you made. So NAB, NAB's journey into cloud is obviously one of a, 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 a regulatory need as well. But equally, how quickly do you think you'll be fully cloud? I think it's, 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 it's a very, very uh, big question in terms of what does fully cloud mean? We, we will run a number of assets in our data center and we will we'll go to the cloud where it makes sense. 
right? Where it adds benefit to us, to the business, to the customers. Uh, for example, we have a bunch of Z series ledgers which we run on premises, and for now, we believe they are fit for purpose. They work. Uh, they're not the most innovative products which we have, but they don't need to be innovative. So uh, there's no reason for us to go. We absolutely will apply cloud mindset to them. We'll try to make sure we can have for, more automation there and we can run more effectively. But you know, we're not saying we're going to switch off our data centers at this stage. But most of our investment right now in new systems and new tech uh, is coming into the cloud. So uh, I don't think in the near future our ambition is to be 100% there, but uh, we believe that in two, three years' time, uh, we will have most of our digitally native and our, how to say, business-driven assets uh, there, uh, fully cloud, and it will be a multi-cloud provider game, we also know that. So we are definitely, uh, we're currently working with Amazon a lot, but we are definitely doing work with Microsoft and Google as well, so it's not a one vendor game. That's a great answer. Thank you, Yuri. I really appreciate that. Dave, do you have any final thoughts or questions at all? No, I think it was great. It's a great show. Thank you, Yuri, for being on. Hey, thanks very much. Thanks. Yeah, and Yuri, I can't say thank you enough. Uh, you know, I do really appreciate your, your full-on uh, diary at the moment. And, you know, it's taken months to get to this. So, it's, uh, you know, I appreciate your patience and, and working with us on this one. That was great. Thanks. Thanks for having me here. Yeah, absolute pleasure. And thanks for watching, everyone. We really hope you enjoyed watching this week's training show with Yuri Misnik, the CIO of NABBank, and David Linthicum. And, you know, you can get us all on Twitter as well, which is Yuri's on Twitter, which is y at y Misnik, and David's on Twitter, which is at David Linthicum. I'm also on Twitter, which is at Nelson underscore Hilliard. Thanks for watching. Remember to like, subscribe, comment, and share these videos to your friends and colleagues. All the best. Until next week.